twisted, rotate in a certain way. You can formulate uh, some really interesting patterns, right? So the first thing we will do is just simply um, try to recreate this manually in Rhino. Then we're using Grasshopper script uh, to automatically construct. So I'm thinking this could be as simple as a loft, like a three um, three lines. So I have one line here. Then I duplicate. So I have another line here in the middle. I have another line here at the bottom. Right, three lines. Right. Um, then we can um, twist this uh, with Grasshopper. Uh, so here, uh, this is curve. So I will set the first curve here. V, control V, so I have three curves. Set second curve here. Set third curve here. So I have three. So I will merge. Right. So merge these three as a group. Then we'll do a loft. So you have that ribbon. And we want to actually control the second curve, right? We want the curve to be twisted. <clears throat> so how we do it? Uh, I think the easy way is just simply rotate. Um, when you rotate a curve, you have this option called A, which is basically an angle between uh, 0 to 3.14, right, the pi. Um, so I will do a slider first, and I want to define a slider um, from zero to the pi, and I drag this to the A. So this will be the rotation. You can actually see it rotate now, right? 180 degrees, and I will bring this G into the D2. So D2 now is, um, is controlled by these values. As you already see the twist is happening now. That's actually pretty cool. Um, but the question is how we can generate. Do you have another image to show the actual facade? Yeah, if you do, go ahead and post. Um, I think the goal is I want this kind of flow, right, in, in a certain way. So I guess we can do, let's just draw three curves. One curve here. Enter. And leave one curve for the bottom. I should duplicate so I have one for the bottom one for the top um, I should have another one do this as a as organic shape I have one for the middle um, yeah if you find the the image, let me take a look. I, I guess the point is, can we, you know, make this middle point, right, sort of flow along this curve? Right. So it generates some interesting patterns. Um, I think it's doable for sure. Uh, so first, let's um, Let's take the curve.
So I have this first curve. And then I will divide. I, I will divide this by 10 points, maybe 20 points. Let's do 20. And not. Right, so I have 20 points there on the top. Uh, then I will do array. Um, what is the best way? Let's see, we can do a curve array. Yeah, maybe we'll do just do a curve array, hmm, polar array. Let me take a quick look. Curve count. Yeah, I don't really like this one because when you array, this line will actually be rotated. So maybe not using curve array. Um, how about um, there's another uh, command called orient. Um, So basically give two points A and B and objects can be you know transferred from A to B. Uh, so in this case if I have these 20 points as B I can transfer my original curve as A Um, let me just take a quick look. Let me hide it. So you basically have this curve being transferred. Now if I reduce this, Let's make this one really short. Hmm, that's interesting. 35. Oh, let's just reduce this to none. My idea is, is I want this curve to be able to uh, be duplicated along this one. But why there is no, okay, so let's set, hmm, what's the best way? Um, we can set a point. So I will just create a point right here using snap. Or maybe we do this. I will do an endpoint. I think this is more accurate. I will using the endpoint as A. Okay. Why well, I have 72? So that's good. So let's try to divide these two, let's see, five points, okay? So basically in the top curve, I generated five points, right? And then I'm using this command, this is called orient. You basically duplicate this guy five times along the top. So you have this first set of curve. We call this top curve. So let's orient this a little bit. So this is all going to the top. So you call this top curve. Okay. 
OK. Uh, then we're going to actually repeat uh, this process for the middle curve and also for the bottom curve as well. Uh, so let's just organize this a little bit. Right. So I will draw, actually I already draw this middle curve. So let's just simply duplicate this whole thing. Um, so let's just rename this to track. Now this is actually easier if you have a good name for it. So this will be the um, short, uh, I just call this short line. So the short line is this guy. And the track is basically the top, right? So you have these two input, and this one control the number, right? Is the how many? Um, let's give a name. Number of uh, ribs. So right now it's five. All right, so this is all good. Um, then I will just simply group them. So you know this is the top track. We're going to repeat this for the middle track, right? So I will just simply copy, paste, put it here. For the middle track, I will, uh, since I already have this middle track, this is the uh, short line. So let's just simply rename. Well, I think we can just take this as a short line, okay? Okay, so it's in. Um, and then I will actually drag this guy into the rotation. Got rid of this. Oh, sorry, this is the track, right? Yeah, I've made a mistake. So let's set a curve. This is the track. The short line should go to the rotation. So set curve. All right, so you have this sequence. See what I mean? So they are actually follow this curve. So the track and short line. Yeah, so this is all kind of same logic. Okay. Now I repeat this for the bottom. So control C, control V. Okay. So for the bottom, the track set will be here. A short line will be here. Right, so we have that. Um, then we will just simply re group them together as uh, let's save this guy as um, ribbon. So we're going to reloft this. So first, I will take the first group. And I take the second group. Then I take the third group. The ribbon looks weird. <laughs> it's because it's trying to re you know, create a single loft, right? Cross all the lines. That's not right. Uh, so what I will do now, it's tricky. I will disable this first. Then I will set this as a graft, graft, and a graft. Then I turn around this. So now you have it. Right. So graft means you divide this into groups. 
So you have, you know, each group you have three lines, and they will finish one group, three lines, then move on to the second group, to the three lines. So that's graft means. Um, it's also a good idea, you know, since we have five, right, to control the number. It would be nice you just using one controller to control all all the five. I will get rid of this five. I will get rid of this five. All right, so I will use uh, one single slide to control the final result. Uh, so here, if I drag the slide, you will see the number increase. Okay. Um, I think this is good. Um, let me rotate this a little bit. So maybe it's a good idea. Let's just display all the result. Hide everything except the final. And here I can rotate. Oh, sorry, I forgot to drag the rotate result as my short line, right? So this should be my short line. Um, yep, so short line should be the rotate. Right, so is is rotating now. So they all rotate the same degree, um, but you know this line, right, is being you know pushed up and down uh, based on this curve. So if I edit this curve, you see the result will update. Right. So we could have. Uh, you know, many different way to control it. Um, yeah, so this is one way to do. I think it's, it's pretty close, right, to to what you are trying to do. Um, you can just make a thickness here. It's called extrude. You can also do this in Rhino. Um, so when you extrude a surface, right, uh, you probably want to give a distance. In this case, this will be a distance along the Y. Y distance, yep. Right. And you can give a slider. Let's say I want to do maybe I don't know what the two means. It could be two centimeter or uh, depends. So here for plug, you see that thickness. Um, and also because you are transfer this into Revit, uh, this poly surface will not work. Uh, so you have to convert this into a mesh. Yeah, the Revit take mesh. So it's basically break this into triangles, which is fun. Then if you bake, right, let's bake it into layer two. Click OK. Close it. And you will have all the, you know, baked surface with the thickness. I think that's that's all. Um, you can definitely play with the script. Um, maybe I think the, the way I define the top and the bottom, right? You can you can make it more uh, identical to each other. And also the curve in the middle is kind of tricky. I can show you the script I have. Uh, this is the middle one. Let's just turn on this display. It basically, let's see. Let me hide this original one. 
So it's basically take the track, right? Then the track will be subdivided into points, right? And along the points, I have this, you know, the middle short line, you do the loft. Um, but the tricky part is when you, when you break a, a, a curve with, let's say, 10, 19 points, uh, this I think is based on the distance. So it's based on the distance, these two points travel. So it's not necessarily a land vertically to the top and bottom, right? Not necessarily. So that's the reason you see some ribbon is, you know, being curved, pushed into some direction. Um, so that might be the limitation on, on, on this approach. Um, but it's pretty close, right? Um, so that is something you might want to think about. If I do want to make all the ribbons, uh, this thing always in a vertical, right? You probably want to reconstruct uh, the points, right? So you only take, let's say, the Z value of these points, uh, but for the X and Y value, uh, you want this be like consistent. Um, I think that is a possible solution. Mm. Yeah, I think that's something doable though. Um, let me see what is the best way. Only take the Z axis, the Z direction. And for the Y, right, X and the Y, you take it from here, right? Then you need to do a rematch. Yeah, this could be a little bit complicated, uh, but let's try that. Um, so I will copy this. Well, let me save it. Then I will save this as a different file. This is called ribbon2. So in this version, I will try to uh, try that approach. So for each point in the middle, I will deconstruct. So when you deconstruct, you get X, Y, Z value. Uh, the only thing I care is about the Z value, right? Uh, the X value is actually, let me see. Yeah, I will using this X, Y from the top. So I will do the same thing, deconstruct. So the point is I want to take the X, Y from the top point. I want to take the Z, right, from the bottom point. Um, can I do that? Let's see. Construct a point based on X, Y, Z. Um, let's see how to do it. Um, least mass surface trim. I think it's in the run of the vector. Point construct. Right, so here it's called construct a point. Take X, Y, Z value. Uh, so I have to take the X, I'll take the Y, and the Z is come from here. So I have 20 points, right? But these 20 points uh, are, are actually different from the original 20 points. Then I feed this into the B. Does that make a difference? So this is, let me just double check. This is the original points. This is the new points. You see it's a little bit different. 
original new right so new points is guaranteed is in the middle then i loved oh sorry i i'm looking at the baked version <laughs> that's the reason okay so now this is guarantee all the points are vertically aligned. Yeah, so this is a better. You see, this is all vertically aligned, right? As three curves. So you merge them. Right? I will bake this again to another layer and save it. So now, if I look at the result, so I have, let me select selection. So this is one version, and here's another version. Right? So this version is, is more close right, to what you have researched. Um, but if you see, this is actually all vertically aligned. Right? They probably have like a, you know, some guiding track. So it's equal numbers right, along this track. So you have this twisted. Yeah, I would say this is pretty close. That is pretty close. 